All right. We've got the parts here. We've got the kit already. Inner frame already done. This inner head. This head goes here. Snaps into place like so. Left, right, up, down. Cool. And then we have the GN drive. And I think that goes like, like that. There we go. And of course there's these latches that latches onto it, I guess. But there you go. Nice. Perfect grade Gundam Exia. Inner frame, that is. Now complete. Wow, this is really, really nice. You gotta learn to appreciate uh, its overall design. Starting from the bottom up, bottom here, the legs look great. Nice and strong and sturdy, good detail. Uh, different, you know, different por portions of the leg. It's not, it's not a universal leg, you have one side that's different from the other. I really like the ball, the massive um, ball connection to the legs. The very, very well intricate design detail of the inner, inner frame from the chest area, which pretty much stands out on its own. Um, an interesting take on the idea of the of the shoulder and going down the arm. The hands work, look really nice and big. Took a while for me to sand down these little fingers. I don't want to. I was afraid to lose them. And, and eventually, I'm gonna have to pop this open so I can paint it. The head has a very good detail. Kind of like that, you know. It's a, there's a mask under the mask, but it's an inner frame, so that's good. In the back, you got some more detail here. Especially in the back area, the GN drive, of course. But there should, you know, obviously there's more to the GN drive than what you see here. Um, forearms, the. I'm looking at areas that that maybe I need to work on cleaning up a bit. I like the uh, design of the of this. The, the legs look really nice. The back portion of the legs, and of course the stand. Which, of course, in reality, if we Slide this up a bit. I'm just gonna push it up. There we go. Put this to the side. Whoops. And we put this on its own, like so. There we go. Wow. That's up. Big ass kit. I'm sorry. You know, I gotta re redesign, reposition the camera a bit. But here we go. Ho ho ho! That is pretty amazing. Let me pull out something that I can use as a size comparison. Uh, oh, all right. I put a lot of things away, so give me a second here. I wasn't actually planning on this, but let me put this guy here as a point of reference. Perfect grade inner frame Exia. Master grade double Zeta Gundam version Katoki. Wow. That's really. Yeah, I thought this was big, but then looking at this, I was like, holy crap. <laughs> Very nice. I'm not disappointed in, in getting this. I've. Well, I've, uh, well, not that I'm disappointed. I'm more like a. Was not in the mood to paying up to three hundred and fifty dollars or more for the LED light set, and I was actually reviewing the build of this with the arms and the legs, and how there are gaps everywhere where the wiring is fed through, and then you, of course the lights are in these little um, little um, cartridge-like uh, boxes that have lights in specific positions. So. If we review this, how I remember it from, uh, I went to Daylong's uh, website. So you had a box of light that's down here that faces down and to, the, and to one side. So one will be one side for the one leg, the other one will be the other side for the other leg. 
Then you had a light source up here, but there's two, I believe, two light sources on the side, and I don't know if it's either maybe one light bulb for both and one the other one for this. Then as the wiring goes up, oh, that's another thing. The Since it's hollow, the, how the wiring will go through, there's a little hole here that's fed through this hole in there, and then I believe it goes all the way up to the side to the back, where it's then connected to the to to the base to the to the actual chest. Now that's where the where I was looking at the uh, data long site where it's more of a little controller box. When I was building the inner frame, the chest area, there was a little part here. As a matter of fact, let me see. I think it's in this manual. Uh, okay, I believe it could be this one. This part right here. Actually, I'm sorry. The lighting is not good enough. Let me just bring it up. There we go. I believe this part has to be omitted. Um, so that the casing goes there and then the light fixtures are fed throughout the case. Now, unfortunately, this, this manual does not have the LED instructions set on how to put it in. I believe when you get the LED version, it'll have that. But... When I was looking at the controller, little controller box, the light set itself had one light forward, one light, uh, one light forward, and two going down, two going up for the um, illumination of these little parts here and here. Then you have the connector of another little uh, controller box set with two lights. One's green for the eyes and the um, this while the top part of the head and the side here and the uh, ears is the um, the colors of the either going from blue to red or pink I don't know how whatever the colors in could be colorblind for the arms you have wiring that connects to three sets so one set goes here under the forearm and the forearm light supposedly lights this part of the arm and then the the little part here while another set lights up this part and this part. Now, you have two lights up here, so one feeds around here, so it illuminates this whole area. And once all that's connected to the last part, which is the GN drive itself, then you see the whole amazing thing of it turning, you know, turning from normal lighting effects to GN particle effects to Transam and all that fun, beautiful stuff that we all want to have. And unfortunately, I'm now kind of regretting the fact that I did not order it, and did not get that, did not purchase it. So, I'm faced with a dilemma. Do I continue or do I do something cool? Um, hmm, how can I say this in a way that you guys can understand? As I was doing this, I began doing my own research. My own research in, oh, I don't know, making my own LED light sets. I've done it before with the, um, with the 4000 scale Macross. How hard could it be with this one? It is a bit of a challenge, to say the least. I have the base. I have a connection here that goes up to there. I could wire up something like a battery pack here, which probably be only for something to turn on and off. Fed it through there. But it's the controlling of the wiring that I have to figure out. Now, with the with the ship that I made last year, it was a it was a, a mishmash of wiring, which was you know a, a nightmare to to get the wire management done correctly, so it wouldn't interfere with anything. And I was able to successfully fix it and do it. But how do I do it with this one? I think I may have to make my own little custom boxes where I can put the two LED lights or two yeah you know, maybe two or three I don't know how much it is, and then somehow. Uh, definitely this is going to have to be a parallel build, parallel connection, because, so, alright, let me, let me flush it out, 
there are three lights here, three lights here, three lights here, three lights here, five lights here, two here, and one in the back. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a total of 12, followed by the six in the back, that's 18, followed by the two, that's 20. 20 LED fucking lights. I ordered a pinkish color type lights on eBay. I only ordered 10. I should have bought, ordered more because I, I was trying to figure this whole thing out. I may have to order another 10, but then I need lights to eliminate these green lights, which I don't have. This is a blue light, but then it's going to turn around regardless of the case. I didn't. I don't have any more wire, um, copper wire, uh, uh, shielded. So measuring the distance between here and here, soldering it, trying not try to get as much in there. It's going to be a going to be a challenge. However, with me thinking of that out loud and seeing if I can do it or not. Some people were sending me photographs and email and messages on Facebook and on my YouTube video telling me that someone is making the LED light sets already. And that someone happens to be Samuel Decals. I sent him, I saw his website, I'm sorry, I went to his Facebook page and I saw it there. And lo and behold, yes, he is building his own. I was, well, I don't know if he's either building his own or he's getting somebody to do it for him. But I immediately, immediately sent him an email asking him, let me know when this is available so I can pre-order immediately. But I also asked him, I sent him a message, will this be ready and can I get this before April? Hopefully in March, April, whatever. And uh, I haven't heard a response yet. So if I can get it from Samuel and he tells me he'll get it, he'll, he'll have it run ready by that time. I will put on, I'll buy it and I'll put it on this kit. If he tells me no, then it's going to be a nice little challenge for me to actually put the lights on this kit once I get the, the LEDs. So let's see what will happen then. But I'm definitely lighting this kit up. Even if it's not complete, just trying to get maybe the chest, the arms, the legs, just get enough there to give it a good illumination. I'm going to do it for this guy. Because I am not going to go to Mosquito Con just having it all Trans Am and not having a light effect on it, light effects on it. And that's my goal for this year. Another thing that I'm going to do also, and this is also in regards to painting. We've already discussed the paints that I'm using. Now, let me, refer, let me uh, talk to you about the painting. So the inner frame is going to be painted uh, gunmetal. There's, there's enough in here for the entire kit. The light gray parts is going. To, I'm going to use chrome. This should be enough for the chrome. The red parts for the chin, the area here and here, using the metallic mecha color set by Ammo Meg, and use the metallic red. The yellow will be metallic orange. So that will be that. Now, the blue will be will be painted with using. Uh, GX215 gunmetal bloody red. For the armor parts, I've already, uh, the, the white parts, excuse me, it's going to be the GX212 GX metal peach. I showed a demonstration before where you guys saw me put it on a, on a piece of uh, cardboard to see how it looks. You guys liked it guys don't like it and in truth be told I have to agree this is a little too dark and I did been I've been asked maybe you should lighten it up put maybe a little white in it maybe pearl white somebody just said metallic white is there such a thing as metallic white um, because white is white you know any more metallic in that steel but uh, yeah, I'm kind of second-guessing myself. 
with that being said, I uh, I continued doing research and development, uh, research on on paints, and um, I bought spoons, which I'm going to do a color matching type setup with all the colors, so you guys can see it for yourselves, and maybe we'll figure it out. However, when I was searching on on YouTube and Facebook and all that stuff, I found this picture, and take a look at this. This is a petite bear guy that somebody uh, um, in Southeast Asia must have painted, and it's the perfect metallic pink. So I did. Uh, I sent them. Uh, actually, the guy had it documented on on the actual photograph itself, and this is called Gaia Moto. Uh, rose, I think it's hot rose. I think it is. Hold on a second. I gotta dig it up again. I always seem to keep missing this. Here we go. So, oh, it's called, it's called rose gold. And I think that is perfect for this kit. So I ordered it. I, I immediately went on on eBay, purchased it. It's on its way. Unfortunately, estimated delivery time says, oh, somewhere between Wednesday, January 24th, till March. So, yeah, that's going to hinder me a lot. So, I got two things that's holding me back. LED lights and this unique color that I want to try on this. Uh, I want to do this right. And for me to do this right, I'm going to have to pause pause the build for now I'm gonna get all the other parts ready I'm gonna clean it up I'm gonna maybe do some priming I may do the inner frame first build, paint this one first as well but I'm gonna stop until I get all the necessary tool you know items that I need get the information that I need and then shut up and then we'll determine whether um, whether you know the color will be perfect for this kit, and the light set will be ready in time for me to for this kit. And of course, if I get the notification that the light set is not going to be ready for in time for this kit, then I'm going to be doing a lot of LED work, a lot. All right, so that is my plan. So this is episode six of my Perfect Grade Gundam Exia Trans Am edition. I'm going to stop. That doesn't mean I'm not going to stop building. I'm going to start building other kits so you guys can see this, you know, see other kits I'm going to make. Um, and then we'll take from, you know, once I'm done with them and I get all the other parts, we'll proceed with this guy. So this is, uh, this we're not done with the Exia. We're just postponing it until further notice. So I'd like to thank you guys all for watching and stay tuned for the next episode of Perfect Grade Trans M Gundam Exia coming soon.